People tend to be in search of a better life and go for it away from home. Sometimes they are brought in very specific places that are difficult to call comfortable. A vivid example of this is the city of La. Rinconada, lost high in the mountains, which is sometimes called hell on earth. At the foot of the glacier in the mouth of an extinct volcano is the Peruvian city of La Rinconada. Due to its location at an altitude of about 5,100 meters above sea level, it was honored to become the highest settlement on earth, with a permanent population. For example, Mount El Bruce is only 500 meters higher, but people do not live or work there. The climatic conditions in La Rinconada resemble the climate of the west coast of Greenland. The city has rainy summers and dry winters. At the same time, the average annual temperature barely exceeds 1 degree. In addition, the locals suffer from a lack of oxygen. But despite this, according to the official census of 2017, the population of La Rinconada has about 12,000 people. But however, looking ahead, these figures are far from reality, and there are much more people. But what brought them to such an unfriendly place with a very harsh climate at a height that is considered critical for life? Once on these territories there was a small village inhabited by local ethnic groups. The situation changed dramatically at the beginning of the 21st century. According to the National Geographic report, in the first decade, the number of people increased to almost 30,000 and continued to grow. It is not known for certain what the population is now, but it clearly does not correspond to the data of the National Population Census. The reason for the migration of the population to La Rinconada turned out to be simple. The fact is that there is gold in the local mountains, and since 2001 the price for it has gone up. Already in 2010, it cost four times more. The gold rush began in La Rinconada, and with the arrival of electricity in 2002, the resettlement process accelerated. Those who wanted to get rich were not afraid of difficult climatic conditions, not the prospect of hard work, not the lack of comfort, but the lack of government control made mining chaotic. Almost all mines and mining companies operating here have the status of informal, to put it bluntly, illegal. Peru has strict safety regulations. Unfortunately, few people in La Rinconada care about them. Therefore, working in local mines is a very risky business. Dangers lie in wait for people literally at every step. For example, there is no guarantee that a collapse will not occur in the midst of work or dynamite will not accidentally explode. The government of Peru is trying to formalize small-scale mining, but in the case of La Rinconada, and not too successfully. Old-timers remember how at the dawn of the 1990s the army came to defeat the miners. Their visit did not greatly affect the situation. As of mid-2010, the Peruvian authorities were barely present in the city. The owner of one of the local shops admitted to a journalist that if government inspectors come and order the mine to be closed, it will reopen immediately after they leave. Outdated methods are used to extract gold. Miners have to work with primitive tools by today's standards, hand drills, picks and shovels. Gold is extracted from the ore using mercury while amalgamation is the oldest existing method of gold purification. It is believed that mercury polluted the local land, water and air. Naturally, cases of poisoning are not uncommon, which affects the central nervous system. The victims suffer from insomnia, tremor, increased excitability and other equally unpleasant symptoms. In La Rinconada, it is clearly visible how high the true price of gold is. A modest-sized piece of yellow metal, this is 250 tons of rock, half a kilogram of mercury is almost the slave labor of miners, not many of whom live to be 50 years old. This is the average life expectancy in a high-altitude city. 
which is 20 years less than in the rest of Peru. The National Police has a single small post in the city. Probably all the officers who serve here come here only on short-term business trips. They have good uniforms, four-wheel drive trucks and automatic weapons, but it doesn't really help them fight crime. Her level in the city is very high. Alcoholism is almost the main urban entertainment, and the most dangerous places are nightclubs and brothels. They are rather gloomy establishments that you would hardly like to visit. It's dark, noisy, full of drunken miners squandering hard-earned money. Complementing the bleak picture are unhappy-looking women engaged in prostitution, and among them there are miners. In this regard, sexually transmitted diseases, including HIV, are flourishing in the city. Another important problem is that miners often do not see salaries in the classical sense of the word. The Kaharu system is widespread here. Its essence is simple. The earner will work for a month without any payment. If he is lucky, then he will be allowed to work for himself for one or two days. But there are pitfalls here too. The prospector is allowed to take exactly as much ore as he is able to carry. At the same time, it is far from a fact that there will be gold in the stone chosen by him. The difficulties will not end there, the miner is unlikely to be able to sell what he found for a decent price. Most likely, he will be given the very minimum, since the sales market is not really regulated, and the gold-buying shops are trying to cheat the workers. But, nevertheless, for gold miners, the income at the mine is considered significant. On average, they earn up to $200 a month, in successful months, they can earn up to $1,000, but this is rather an exception and a rare piece of luck. At the same time, the worker, as a rule, needs to feed a family of several people with this money. Residents are not very concerned about the modern agenda, so gender discrimination is flourishing in the city. Women are strictly forbidden to work in mines. And it's not just that men are stronger. To this day, people are in no hurry to abandon the superstitions associated with women, mines, and bad luck. Despite this, they have a chance to get hold of gold. While husbands are in the mines, well, or in entertainment establishments, wives process discarded rocks in search of gold grains, being outside the mines. Such women are called polikers, which translates as gold collectors. Sometimes small children work with them. Child labor was once used in the mines themselves, but now this is no longer practiced. As for the city itself, it's actually a sad sight. From the outside, it looks very unusual, but once you get into it, you realize that reality is harsh. Residents huddle in miserable shacks sheathed with metal sheets, which dot all the slopes. Narrow streets buried in mud are associated with roads in some quarry. The central streets look a little better, as more substantial houses have been built on the first floors, which are located various shops. Surprisingly, in such a large settlement, there is almost no developed sewage and sewage system. Very often, slop is poured out just on the street. Most of the buildings are not heated. There is electricity, and some lucky people have internet. Dirt and garbage is one of the business cards of the city. In La Rincanada, it is difficult to hide from the stench depleted by its sewage and waste. According to one of the local doctors, about 30 people die every year due to mining accidents. Lives are still 70, cut short by strangulation of gunshot and knife wounds received either in a fight or as a result of a robbery. Many people die of natural causes. Mercury pollution and altitude have an extremely negative effect on the human body. Blood clots, kidney failure, pulmonary edema, problems with the nervous system. One way or another, every miner who has lived a serious period in the city has a number of chronic diseases. Women often have urinary tract infections. The reason for this is the problems with sewerage mentioned above.
above. At home, the locals use chamber pots. There are public toilets in the city, but firstly they are paid, and secondly, it is extremely unpleasant to be in them. Therefore, men often do their business on the street, but women have to endure. Now up to 10 tons of gold are mined in the mines of La Rinconi per year. But as far as these figures can be believed, this is a good point. Since the black market is flourishing and no one wants to pay taxes, and the figures are deliberately underestimated, the government turns a blind eye to lawlessness and anarchy. The city is ruled by companies engaged in gold mining, which are not up to improving the working conditions of miners and developing the infrastructure of the city. La Rinconada seems to be a place where darkness and hopelessness reign. Even just living there is difficult, and mining gold is even more difficult. Despite this, the city is unlikely to lack miners, for whom hard work is associated with the highest daily risks, almost the only chance to earn more or less decent money. And while there will be gold in La Rinconada, they will not agree to work in the mines and near them. That's all for me. If you like this issue, be sure to support the channel with a video repost and comment. It will help us in development. See you soon.